Pali word samma, as in samma to take right view. Samma sangapa, right resolve. It can also have the meaning of just right, balanced, steady. That's how John Fuang liked to interpret it. And it's an important concept to keep in mind as we practice, especially as we're working on concentration. We're trying to bring the mind into balance and then maintain that balance. And sometimes the getting into balance is the harder part, and sometimes the maintaining is the harder part. You want to be good at both. Getting into balance means you have to direct the mind in the right direction. If it's too active, you have to think of ways of calming it down. If it's too sluggish, you have to think of ways of giving it more energy. In other words, there's a certain amount of figuring out. That has to go into this process of getting the mind to settle down. This is why the Buddha put directed thought and evaluation in as two of the factors of the first jhana. You're talking to yourself. You're trying to figure things out. You see this in his instructions on right mindfulness. If you notice there's sensual desire, you remind yourself, okay, there's sensual desire here. And when you notice when it's not there, or it's being replaced by ill will, or when good factors arise, you want to notice that they're there as well. And you talk to yourself about that. It's the, the phrase in the sutta is, okay, mindfulness has arisen within me. Analysis of, qual analysis of qualities, persistence, rapture, these things have arisen within me. This is part of the mind's dialogue with itself. So if you see something that needs to be dealt with, you deal with it. If you see something that needs to be maintained, you maintain it. So you can shepherd the mind into a state where it feels perfectly balanced. And then when it's balanced, you try to maintain it. Think of a person walking on a tightrope. It's not that the person is rigid, but as soon as the person senses things falling out of balance in one direction, the person knows how to compensate. It requires that steadiness of focus and at the same time a certain fluidity around that steadiness so it's not tight. If the person stood rigid, he or she would fall off the fall off the rope. So you have to hover around your mind state and keep it right where it is. Basically, you tell it to stay. And you should probably notice if you tell a dog to stay, its feet are there, but it's just quivering with the desire to move on. And so the mind will have that kind of quivering. What's next? What's next? What's next? We're impatient. I've only got one week left. Got to get to insight. You can recognize that as a disturbance. That's restlessness and anxiety. Even though it seems to be skillful in its aims, it's not skillful right now. It's not right for this time and place. What's right for right now is you figure out how to get the mind into balance and then keep it there. Try to find the spot in the body that you feel most easily able to focus on. And then as you focus there, you find patterns of tension building up as you try to keep it there. Okay, learn what you can let go of. When the Buddha talks about spreading ease and rapture through the body, sometimes more it's, a, it's more a matter of allowing certain patterns of tension to relax, relax, relax. And in the relaxation, the ease will come. And as for the rapture, remember, the rapture can come in different levels. And just a simple level of refreshment to really intense energy. 
intense gratification, fullness of the body and mind. But the important thing is that you're able to maintain your focus as easily as possible. There will be some clamping down, but as you get more and more skilled at this, you realize that you can let go of some of the clamping down. So instead of being quivering with anticipation, with the desire to move on, you realize okay, that desire to move on is part of the problem. Let go. And you notice where it's felt in the body and get around the get around that desire sort of through the back door and allow the, the physical manifestation to relax, relax, relax as you maintain this center here. And thoughts will come up. Say, this is stupid. I'm not analyzing anything. I'm not getting any insight. And just drop those. It's almost as if you're poised about to act, but you don't act. You could at any moment think about something, but you don't. And thoughts will come up. Sort of the potential for thoughts will come up. And if you recognize them in time, they don't have to bloom into full blown thoughts. It's just a potential, and then you relax it. Another potential, you relax it. And part of the mind will be curious what would that thought be? What about this thought? And you have to remind yourself that's not what we're here for. We're here to master this skill of how to stay. That's it. Doesn't sound very exalted, doesn't sound very profound, but it's an important skill to master. And your quest for something exalted or profound, you've got to recognize that as a disturbance too. Just let it go, let it go. You're going to stay right here. Maintain this sense of being balanced. If any urges come up, you recognize, okay, this could undo your balance. You've got to maintain your balance at all costs. And then just protect it. This is what mindfulness and alertness are for at this stage in the practice, hovering around the sense of stillness, protecting it. And you say, what am I learning? You said, this is not the time to learn anything yet except for this skill of how to stay with this through the next breath, and then the next breath, and then the next breath. And if things get dull, you ask yourself, well, how do you energize things a little bit? In other words, you work on maintaining the balance, and it's very subtle work. Why do we do this? So we can see the very subtle movements of the mind. Without this kind of stillness, without this ability to maintain your balance for long periods of time, you're going to miss all the important things, because the important things come in subtle form. It's not that the Buddha is asking you to find out what's going, on, what's happening on Mars or in Saturn or in the Andromeda galaxy, or what's happening in the Amazonian jungle or whatever. We're right here. You want to see what's going on right here. And the reason we've been missing all these important things is we're looking for the more blatant things. One, if we're looking, if we're actually looking at the present moment, we're looking for what's blatant. And two, though, we're, we tend to, tend to be basically passing through on our way someplace else. And so we've got to correct that momentum, correct all the urges that go with that desire to just be getting on with the next thing, getting on with the next thing. You're going to stay with this thing and protect this thing that you've got, a center of awareness. And as Ajahn Mahabhu said, this center of awareness, that's the essence of a state of becoming. But after all, that's what concentration is. You're trying to create a state of becoming. So you want to stay with that center. So you can use it to gain subtle understandings, to gain clear understanding as to what else is going on in the mind, anything that would come to knock you off that center. 
even it may sound like a wise or a good or skillful desire, because after all you do want to gain, make progress in the practice and you want to be heedful and keep pushing and pushing, but there are times to push and there are times not to push. There are times to, as the Buddha says, fabricate a fabrication and there are times to just watch. So if you're going to tell this dog to stay, you also have to teach it how to stay relaxed around that spot where it's staying. Now how not to let it get caught up in any other urges that may suddenly bubble up. Patterns of tension that arise, you just zap them. Just think of them dissolving away in your gaze. An image you might want to use is that of a spider on a web. The spider stays hidden on one side of the web, waiting for some fly to get caught in the web. As soon as the fly comes, the spider moves out of its spot, goes over, wraps up the fly, and gets back to its spot. And here you stay with your spot. But if you notice, there's a pattern of tension developing a little knot of a little knot of energy. You move over, unravel it, and then move back to your spot. That's why you have to be watchful of John Cumdee's analogies of a hunter. You have to be very still, but also very alert. Otherwise, you're not going to get your game. So remind yourself you have to be on your guard. The stillness here has that sense of the need to protect it. So it stays in balance. So it stays just right. For as long as you can manage. It may not seem like much, but it's one of the most essential factors of the path. It's only when you stay right here that you can see things from the perspective that the Buddha wanted you to look at them from. So if, see if you can muster up all the qualities that are needed in order to stay, because it's not a small thing. The mind is so easily hoodwinked into moving off, getting entangled in some thought world. It's used to that. This is what samsara is all about. You're wandering around. Now you're going to stop wandering. It's going to take a while to get used to this new skill. And when you tell the mind to stay, and it can stay. I knew of someone one time who was looking for a dog that would be super obedient. Tell it to stay, and then you go off and come back eight hours later and the dog is still there in the position, which is unrealistic for dogs. But after all, we're not here training a dog, we're training the mind. And so it's not too much to ask. Get the mind to be in position and then just try to stay, stay, stay right there. If part of the mind rebels, you keep reminding it, okay, there is a purpose to this. It's not just the staying. Because once the mind can stay, then you can use it. As a John Fung used to say, there are three parts to the meditation. One is learning how to do it, the other is how to maintain it, and then how to use it. And then before it can re really use it for the highest purposes, you have to work on the maintaining. And even in the course of maintaining a little bit, you're going to be able to put it to use. I mean, you have to. As you go through life, you're going to need whatever powers of concentration, whatever powers of mindfulness and discernment you can muster at any one time. You can't tell the problems of life will go away and come back when I'm ready for you. Some of them demand to be resolved. Right then, right there. And so you use what you've got. But at the same time, you also want to be continually working on improving what you've got in terms of your powers of concentration and equanimity and stillness, serenity, all the factors of awakening, bringing them all into balance. 
So it's not just a matter of dealing with everyday problems, but dealing with deeper problems in the mind. Why is there suffering? Why is it? Why do craving and clinging keep leading to becoming? Why do our actions always keep leading to suffering even though we don't intend to do things for the sake of suffering? These are the questions you can answer only when the mind gets really still and can learn how to stay still. So try to make that part of your repertory of skills.